when you say the word of, we belong to the land, the land does not belong to us. I'm going to say that again. We belong to the land, the land does not belong to us. It is our job to take care of the land. And in return, it's a reciprocal relationship, right? It is this constant, beautiful, evolving, reciprocal relationship of respect with the land, its original people. We must remember its original people because we are original people of somewhere. Um, and to uphold that respect by caring for the land. And in return, we are always, always taken care of. Um, something my dad has always taught me is ask, and the answer is always yes. Everything you need is always provided, especially on the land. Powerful and, and so true. And, and, and so thank you. And I like, Tina, for you saying we remember as we remember this because we have forgotten. Many of us have forgotten this. We, we all know this at some point, at somewhere in our, our body, we, we just have, some of us have just forgotten. And so, yes, um, so thank you for that. Yeah, and imagine, you know, I'm gonna go back to the word imagine, imagine econ an economy that is based on that nothing is ours and that we are just stewards, like just, take that in for a second because that is so um that's that is decolonization right like where where i i loved what you said and it is so powerful and if we can remember that nothing actually belongs to us and that we are stewards for the time that that our our feet are of the land that's um and this reminds me of one of the things that Diane Whalen said, and that is, we don't owe our children an economy. We owe them clean air, land, clean air, and clean water. And I, again, that has transformed my own work. And so, how do we, how do we tell stories? Because that's actually part of my work. I work with elected officials on stewardship. How do I tell stories to connect that that understanding and deepen it so that it actually is is received both intellectually because it has to be and uh, and from the heart um, emotionally, spiritually, viscerally, um, something I like to do, I work a lot with children and youth and something I love to do with the children and youth I work with is to bring them out to explore story. It's land-based learning um, because everything we need is provided. That includes the stories. Um, I am a spoken word artist and a poet and a writer, so I love metaphors. <laughs> and nature provides every metaphor you could possibly ask for. <laughs> it is so beautiful. It is so wonderful. And it's actually this uh, insanity, beautiful art behind me is my decolonizing business model. And it's all based on nature. It's based on understanding seasons and cycles. Uh, it's based on when we, the, through the different seasons, the medicine within the plants changes. Uh, so as an Indigenous person, the times that I would harvest different parts of the plant depend on the season. And there is a really good solid part of the year where all of the plants and the people rest. We rest and reset. That is when the trees lose their leaves and everything just goes to sleep for a little bit. So when I pay attention to my natural body cycle, it wants to do the same thing. I don't wanna be on social media during the winter months. I don't really want to be out doing a whole lot. I want to do my internal work. Um, and so that, that metaphor 
of working with the seasons and the cycles. You know, you have your, your deep, dark, quiet rest. And then in the springtime, the shoots start to come up. And so that's where the medicine is. It's in the shoots. And that's where our new ideas are starting to sprout out. And we're starting to like plant all these other seeds. Uh, and then the summertime, it flowers. So summertime, I'm always extra, extra busy doing, being, um, harvesting foods, processing, playing with my kids, adventuring. Uh, it's a very, very busy season. So I'm, I'm in my flower cycle. And in the fall, and this is something I'm learning <laughs> in my unlearning and learning, we shed. What is no longer serving me? As I'm growing into this person, what is no longer serving the person I'm growing into? And it's okay to let those things go. That's been the hard part for me. I have serious FOMO. <laughs> I don't want to miss out on things. So uh, I'm learning to shed. I'm learning to say, okay, that's no longer serving the big vision. Um, and being okay with that. Because after my rest season, and as I move into my, my seed and my shoot season, there's going to be more. There's always going to be more. And it's this beautiful evolving cycle. <laughs>